guys, how's it going? Welcome back to our beautiful garden inspiration series. This is installment number nine. And this first garden in New York is absolutely beautiful. Well, the home. I mean, first off, you noticed the home. Look at that. That is like the best style of home, in my we opinion. We love that. We love like <laughs> colonial slash Georgian. Anything yeah. that looks like that fits into that style category. Like we agree 100%. That's yeah. our jam right there. It's a beautiful so, home. Oh, pretty. Uh, the columns and just the like the molding, the detail, but still you have the balance and the symmetry. There's a sim simplicity about it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so pretty. And the gardens are really beautiful. You can see that flower bed up front, bird bath tucked in there. So this one was submitted by Chelsea in New York, Zone 5. This is her parents' uh, bed and breakfast. It's called the Brick Inn Bed and Breakfast in Mount Morris, New York. That would be such a fun place yeah. to go visit, wouldn't it? and stay in that beautiful home. They bought it in 2015, and she said the gardens were uh, pretty minimal and they needed some TLC. So over the past few years, they've added multiple garden spaces that are filled with a mix of perennials and annuals, and guests really enjoy relaxing in those spaces, and I totally would. I love this porch. Now, what's your opinion, Erin? Like if <laughs> we've been talking all kinds of different, you know, renovation things that we could be doing with our house. I love the round columns. Yeah. Those are so pretty because they look to scale. Yeah. Like, I Yeah, we currently have uh They're square, square and columns. I like those too. Yeah. But I, I, I don't know. There's so many things I see. I'm like, oh, I want that and that and that. You yeah, pick I, one. Like maybe I'm wrong, but I, I want to say that square feels more craftsman and round feels more colonial. So it kind of just depends on which, you know, yeah, direction you're, right. you're just kind of going. So. So maybe we go around. Maybe. <laughs> way down the line. Yeah. <laughs> we get ready to knock those down. Oh, and I love seeing those yellow Adirondack chairs tucked in back behind the flower bed we saw there in the beginning. Just little seating areas tucked in in the shade. It's awesome. Next is Andrea in Wisconsin zone five. Oh, okay. These pictures were taken at like the perfect time of day just before the sun goes down and you have all the brilliant color in the sky that's then mirrored in the colors of the flowers you've chosen lots of purples and pinks but i see a little bit of kind of like an orangey yellow tinge in some of the foliage oh it's so pretty and then the background of trees erin look at that that's what we need that's what we that's what we're going for our our backdrop is just a baby backdrop for the most part except for the great big evergreens yeah which i'm so thankful for Oh my goodness. Here's a more close up look. There's a whole bunch of beautiful perennials here, you guys. It looks like um, Joe Pieweed and Phlox and Rudbeckia, Echinacea, Spirea. There's daylilies in there. Oh my goodness. And perennial grasses. There's just a beautiful blend. You can see at different times of the day, this backed up shot shows some hydrangeas in there. And then I'm really happy that you included a winter picture. It's always so helpful to see what an area that's really heavy on perennials rather than evergreens, mm -hmm. what it looks like in the wintertime. Because you've got your centerpiece, that triple trunk birch, which I absolutely love. But look what you have left there. Even with um, a layer, like a good layer of snow, you've got your perennial grasses that are popping up. I can see hydrangea blooms, sedum, uh, the seed heads, the cement blooms on the sedum. If you leave your perennials up, which we did with most of ours this last year, uh, it really does add so much interest i mean without needing to have an evergreen right there oh we've got a before on this next one this is from lisa in minnesota zone 4b okay so let's take a look at this a grass area it looks like maybe that was a fire pit right there in the center does that look a, like a fire pit to you yeah sure. there's arbor kind of hanging out there and the after oh yes of yes course, yes on that design i love it that's exactly what's behind our Hartley right there. The exact, I mean, measurements are probably a little different, but the shape is completely the same. And I love it. You know what I really like, Erin, here? See in the, the fountain in the center, there's that planting area around the mm -hmm. base of it. That would be, that's something that we will do in the patio, brick patio area, but that would be really pretty back behind the Hartley as well. Yeah, do we have uh, enough room? Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> there's always room for a little bit of, some some plants back there. But that is such a beautiful, beautiful space, Lisa. So this is a 30 by 30 foot space behind their garage. Um, and this was done just over the last couple of seasons. And she said she's, uh, she's almost gave up on it early on because she'd never gardened before. 
Can you believe that? And look at it all filled in. Oh, my gosh. Do you think that's like one or two years later? Well, she said that they started in 2020 with trees, hardscape, and a few plantings in 2021, and the rest uh, of the perennials were in 2022. So we're talking one or two seasons on those perennials. Yeah. That's amazing. You did a beautiful job. Okay. Oh, another before here. This is in Boston, Massachusetts, Zone 6, Serena. This is a Boston condo. When they moved in, the front patio was full of tall weeds. My goodness, it was full of tall weeds. Okay. And let's check it out after. Look. Wow. Look at that. What are those flowers? I don't know. Maybe she she probably wrote it. Hold on, let me read let me read the description. I get ahead of myself when I see it before because I'm really excited to see the after. Oh, azaleas. We installed blue stones as our hardscape and a border hedging of azaleas, which we're unfamiliar with because we can't grow them here. Right. Um, inspired by her trip to Japan and uh, there's hydrangeas. Inspired by our videos, which is awesome. Over the years, uh, she started experimenting with bulbs. Alliums and tulips, uh, alliums have done well, while tulips not so much. We kind of find those things, right? Throughout the years, you give things a try that you see in a magazine or you see somebody else doing, and maybe it works for your space beautifully and maybe it, it doesn't. That's kind of part of the process. But there's some super tunias in there. Really fun to see a space like that being used. I see that you're having a wonderful looking croissant there with a background of beautiful hydrangeas. <laughs> Love that. Oh, Erin, you're going to love this next one. This is from Gabby in Virginia, Zone 6B. There's a lane lined with autumn blaze maples that are more established than ours. I wonder how old these are. I don't know. Does she say? No. Dang. Ours are going to look like this one day, Erin. Yeah. Oh, it's so pretty. And then we get progression pictures of the color. Absolutely beautiful. And some other pictures here. Drumstick alliums, which I love. Those are so, so much fun, and they're so easy to plant because they're a lot smaller bulb than regular, like, bigger alliums. Really gorgeous. And some perennial beds. There's some lilies in there. Lots of green. I love. Oh, and dogwoods in bloom in front of the house. Love, love that. And red buds. Man, Whoa. red buds are so pretty in the spring. They are just gorgeous. They have pretty fall color, too, though, like that vibrant yeah. yellow. Yeah, that's a really beautiful grouping of them, though. Very striking. Whoa, look at the color here. This is from Amy in Minnesota, Zone 4A. <sighs> oh, that does my heart good just to see that color right now. Supertunia <laughs> looks like Vista Bubblegum, um, like a snowdrift in there. Whoa. You can tell the difference if it's a Supertunia. <laughs> yeah, you can. Versus other weird? Petunias. Yeah, definitely good performance and they're absolutely like thicker beautiful blooms thicker they hold is? they hold it better they're like they lay less like fra they're less fragile yeah. they hold up to water better they they just yeah they don't fold up um as easily and damage as easily but they look beautiful along that white fence i love that and here's a backed up shot Ooh, there's a real pretty gazebo in there oh i hope there's a close-up picture of that the home's beautiful too Whoa, look at this pathway lined with hydrangeas and hostas. And it looks like a hookerella or tiarella there. Whoa. And beautiful coleus planter, but I'm interested in whatever that, it looks like a little hobbit. Yeah. Like home in the back. Oh my goodness. That's gorgeous. The color and oh, there's a close up of the little house. There's a succulent wreath on the door. What a charming little a spot. Is that just a little shed? It looks like it's, we need to do one of these, like a little playhouse <laughs> for the kids, but yeah. really, really fun like that. That is so cute. And the clematis on the corner of that shed is beautiful. Your garden looks absolutely jam-packed full of healthy, beautiful plants. And I bet you people walking by just want to stop. The stream. The st Oh, I didn't even see the stream. What? Yeah. We need that. Yeah. We need a stream. That is so pretty. Look at the layers here, you guys. So if you look at the back of the stream and you see the tree trunk there kind of in the middle in the background, and then right below it, the blue spruce, and then you've got layers of green and there's some variegated, it looks like maybe a Delasperma of some kind, um, but it's got that kind of, when a leaf is variegated with white, you can 
call it a yellow in your landscape. And so it lends that bright pop of color. So you've got blue, green, yellow, and then you've got some deeper foliage here with the begonia on the, the left-hand side. So you've got your red in there. And it looks like some red tucked in on the right-hand side of the, the little stream. It's just such a pleasing look. when Because I feel like there's a ton of stuff in here, but it's not like fighting, you know? Yeah. There's the stream to ground the whole thing and the grass. Grass is super important to me. And I think it's really helpful in a lot of landscapes. I mean, you don't need a lot of it, but I feel like having like patches here and there mm -hmm. is just, it's a grounding, peaceful, yeah, needed peaceful. element in a lot of spaces. Oh, there's a waterfall. Oh, that's a view from the other side. Oh my, my. Amy, you've done a beautiful job. So this is a garden that has been established over the last 25 years. So let that be an encouragement to those of you who are just starting out. It takes a long time. I remember when we very first moved out to my where my parents still live, I was six years old and that was like 30 years ago, <laughs> 30, anyway. It was horrid, it was, you know, waist high weeds. I think they've maintained like two out of the trees that were there and maybe a few raspberry plants that were there and they've created that space. I helped them in my childhood years kind of uh, start forming that space and it takes a very, very long time, time for things to reach maturity and to get that super full, abundant feel because you don't want to haul off and put too many things in there and then have to start ripping things out. I mean, unless that's your process and you want to do it that way, nothing wrong with it. Um, but if you get things the spacing they need and wait for things to kind of fill in and mature, it just takes a while. So anyway, 25 years of passion poured into this garden. Love it. Next one. This is in Ontario, Grimsby, Ontario, zone six uh, from Jenny. This is a north facing small backyard with a balcony overlooking it. And oh my word, is that not the most lush looking space? It looks like a really small space, but really well uh, um, filled in. Yeah. She said it does require trimming back to keep from overgrowth. Now that it's mature, the space has evolved over 12 years. So again, another one that's, you know, taken time to create, but look at the colors here. Ugh. Japanese maple, Hakana Kloa down in there, and hostas, and lamium, and oh my, so, so pretty. I would want to sit down in there. That just looks like a really cool spot. Here's a few more close-ups here. Table with some really pretty planters, rock art, some stacked rocks. I should show Benjamin that and have him start creating little yeah. stacks of rocks. He'd probably enjoy doing that. He loves... Legos. I kind of almost think Samantha would like that more. Well, they probably both would like it. Yeah. Oh, there's a picture in the fall. Look at that. Look at the fall color. The hydrangea in bloom down there. What a pretty space. And I like the um, the stones you've used or the, what do they call them? Not tiles. Yeah, I think so. Kind Stone tiles. tiles. Yeah. Yeah. Those are really pretty. Oh my goodness. Okay. So this next one, this is from Rachel before picture, uh, zone six. Whoa. Okay. So in an effort to save one sycamore tree, <laughs> they ended up with a 30 plus degree hill. And they termed it after mowing for one season. They deemed it the widow maker. Yeah. So they decided <laughs> to start um, assembling some rock walls. So we can see some before pictures here. You can see a rock wall kind of going in around that sycamore. I'm guessing that's the sycamore right there. And then boom, look at the after. That is really lush. It's looking. so pretty. And bravo for saving that tree. Yeah. I mean, I'm all about even if, I don't know. I'm all about taking things out. If it doesn't work for your space, if it's ruining, you know, whatever your end goal is for your space, I'm all about taking it out. But if you love that tree and if it's a good tree, mm -hmm. then you keep it and do what you can to, you know, to design around it. And I think that's such a pretty thing. I feel bad for taking out some of our elm trees, but at the same time, our trees were the widow makers. Yeah. Like they trees were losing, themselves. yeah, the trees, they were losing those huge branches mm -hmm. and it, it's unfortunate when you have to take down large trees, but it can be inevitable too. Right. We just figured, you know, like in a process like this, if Aaron and I were in this before sort of situation with the um, yard renovation, if that sycamore was an elm tree and it was still fine, you know, casting that shade and big, we'd probably still take it out at the beginning stages, mm. knowing what it's going to do after, oh, sure. you know. But a sycamore, a London plane tree is another name for them. Uh, they... 
they're good trees. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're kind of me- messy and that they, a lot of them, my sister-in-law had two of them. Don't they have giant leaves? Yeah. And they, they, a lot of them wait to lose until like winter or spring. Mm-hmm. And then they create a really dense mat underneath the snow and they can be a little bit of a problem and because the leaves are just so huge. This looks like a really open area. I almost yeah. wonder if the wind maybe... Take some of them take away. Take some of them mm-hmm. away. Yeah. That's so pretty. And then we get a top-down sh- uh, shot of this flower bed. It looks like a like a purple rain beech tree. Or no, no, no. That's a r- red bud. Not a beech. Not like a Ruby Falls red bud. That's so pretty. It totally looks like something you would like. <laughs> I know. What's wrong with that? Oh, nothing wrong with it at all. It's beautiful. It Look is. at the color of that. And I love it with everything else in here. The nepeta and daisies. There's lamb's ear. There's some yarrow down in there. Echinacea. Russian sage. Salvia. Lots of beautiful, cool colored tones. It I just like the like, rock wall. Yeah. That's, that's cool. a really good look. It is really good look. And the rock wall, I see that kind of like this picture from the other side. It has multiple layers to kind of, you know, yeah. have the... the a flatter, more flat planting areas. Boy, you still have some grass to mow around that steep spot. That but still is very steep. Yeah. Like, I don't know if, are they doing that with a zero turn? I feel like would tip over. I don't know. It's pretty grass though. And a beautiful solution. Love that. Okay. Next one, you guys, another before shot. Blank slate garden, but with great big trees. This is from Tyler and Brian in Charlotte, North Carolina, Zone 7B. They have a YouTube channel called Gardener in Love. And let's take a look at the after. Oh, well, there's an interim shot. Let's take a look at that first. Yeah, it looks just like us with all the proven winners. What is that, North Pole Arms? It looks like that, kind of creating (laughs) a nice green backdrop. That's a great place to start. And I see your paint lines creating your nice swooped, you know, flower bed areas. Here's another shot kind of going back to the house. I see the panacea giant trellis there that looks just like ours going to the kitchen. The three mm-hmm. right there. That was perfect for your space right there because that's kind of like an, an odd spot. We all have those, those odd spots where we're like, what do we put here? Yeah. Because I don't want just blank wall here. I need something. That's really pretty right there, even if you never grew anything on it. And then here's some after shots. Oh, the black fence. That was a, that was a really good idea. That was a good move. Yep. Yeah, if you can stain something black... The arbs are looking good too. Yeah, they contrasted are. Contrasted against the fence. Yeah. Really beautiful. Oh, and then I like all the white in here. So the hydrangeas, I see some uh, superbina in there, maybe sprinter boxwoods, white echinacea. And, but there's also some other color in other areas. So some uh, more echinacea. Um, and then supertunia and lantana in there. Wow. Boy, you've done a beautiful job with your space. I like your shed too. The white with the black trim. I'm going back to the before because I just have to, I just have to see that shed in the back. Look at it in the before. Looks like it was dog kennel or something. Like the two smaller doors. Might be wrong about that. And it looks like you either framed. I don't think that's the same. Framed that in or got rid of it and got a different shed put in. Because the shed matches your house beautifully and your whole the whole look everything's tied together and beautiful like total mar- modern modern farmhouse shed yeah and they said cheers to an amazing gardening season in 2023 filled with love blooms and not a single spider mite cheers to wow. that well. yes oh also this was bought in 2019 so this is a really new garden too which is amazing you've been, done a lot of work next garden is from leah in pennsylvania zone 6a and this looks to be a before shot, kind of. I mean, there's some, still some really pretty elements here, like the gazebo and the fence and the tree. Uh, but let's take a look at the next picture, the after. Dang. So much more vibrant. Whoa. Well, definitely this picture was taken on a more o- overcast day, first of all. But that gazebo has been repaired, painted. The roof has been the like, layer of mulch stained. The mulch. On the ground. Just the tidiness. It contrasts yeah. the plants so much it does. when you do that. It's a really pretty mulch too. It's like we use compost for our mulch now, mm-hmm. uh, which has been really great for our soil. But I like the consistency of this one. It's like a little chunkier. It's mm-hmm. like an actual uh, mulch, but darker. I love that. So Leah said that they bought this house two years ago from some people who had kind of grown older and they had had a beautiful garden prior and they just they got too much for them and it got away from them a little bit and um 
they attended an open house and it was the garden that sold Leah on it. Like she was sold. <laughs> and it was, she said it was even in the winter with deer fencing up. But oh, she wow. still like saw the garden and thought, I can do something with this. And the gazebo was built in the early 80s by the farmer owner's children and it was fixed up um, our first summer. There's mature trees, rhododendrons, Japanese maples, and peonies. Since moving in, Leah and her husband have weeded, cut back, planted, and added so much. And boy, you can just tell. And it's been a joy to add their own touch to it, which it is. You know, everybody's garden space, for the most part, has their own touch. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always those little elements and those little quirks or whatever that makes it your own space. Oh, look at the fawn. Do you see that fawn walking around? Yep. Oh. I mean, I know you gardeners are probably like, don't ever. Yeah. <laughs> the deer is such a problem. We don't have deer in our garden, so it's like a cute sight to me. But boy, everything looks so healthy and beautiful. What a fun thing to walk through and have a space speak to you like that. Yeah. I remember when we, do you remember when we walked through this house? I mean, we'd been in it a bunch of times because we bought it from family friends, but um Never had I been in this garden or this house thinking that I would ever live here or, oh, yeah. or garden in this space. Uh, but it was like February mm -hmm. or March. Everything was just starting to wake up. It felt, this house felt too grand for us. Yeah. When well, we were you first... guys know where we came from. I mean, we, yeah. were, we were in a little townhouse and a little space. Mm -hmm. Like our gardening space was little and it was jam-packed at that point. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a wonder that you know it yeah. worked out mm -hmm. because it felt like everything was too expensive. There was no way we were going to be able to afford it. Mm -hmm. And then like the appraisal came in lower, and that's like one that of that helped out. It felt hugely. like doors were kind of like yeah. opening in the right way to right. where we felt like maybe we could do like this. Like the appraisal came in, you know, and this is also in 2016. So like, keep that in mind. Yeah. For like home prices. But like the appraisal came in $30,000 lower than what the asking Which price was. Which is a huge deal for us. Yeah. And at the time, people weren't doing cash offers. Nobody was buying houses for, you know, for cash like they are today. And so like if the appraisal comes in 30000 lower, that's what you got to sell the house for. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, whoever buys it is going to get a loan on it. And no bank is going to lend more than what the appraisal comes in at. Uh-huh. So that helped us out a lot. It did. But you guys, the first, remember, like we had no money left. We were so strapped. We were so strapped the first little bit. I remember laying out all of our financials because everything was so, I know that we're like totally getting on a tangent, but it's fun to see where gardens come from mm -hmm. like and how they evolve. But um, I remember laying out all of our financials for your mom because his mom's super good with budgeting and like, yeah. figuring that and seeing she's really practical and realistic. She's wise. She's very wise. Yeah. Um, and I remember laying it all out there because we had just started working with, you know, like proven winners and things and everything was new and it felt very like, ooh, mm -hmm. is this stable? Who knows? You know? Right. And so and we nobody laid... was doing YouTube uh, yeah. full time no. or, I mean, like at the time there was like Martha Stewart, P. Allen Smith. And then there were a couple other people that were doing it. Like Emma Gardner was doing it. Yeah. Uh, Callie Kim was another one. Yeah. And, and they're but still rocking. But they're, yeah. but even they were pretty new to it. Like nobody, I don't think anybody at the time was doing it full time. Mm -hmm. You know, there was just a, like a couple hobby people and the only full timers were like big, like, yeah. you know, like Alan Smith felt channels. like, yeah. Yeah. yeah I yeah. mean, when you have a show on TV or, yeah. you know. Right. It just felt like this weird territory. I remember your mom was like, well, I mean, at this time we didn't have kids. She's like, what's the worst that can happen? You have to sell it and move. You don't have kids that you're, you know, moving around right. all over the place. I'd just do it. Yeah. Try just it. jump. Yeah. Jump in. And so we did. And it's all, thank the Lord, worked out mm -hmm. really, really beautifully. But anyway, there's a little glimpse into our history. Yeah. But the first, the first like two weeks, because I think we were like in between when we were going to be paid, right. you know, and we were like, nobody, nothing can break. Right. Like we need to not have anything happen because we have literally no money left. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, and we're still working on like stuff inside the house. We focused so much out here. Like you guys see all the stuff out here. We've done, we've been able to do a tremendous amount of gardening projects, but the house still paint colors from the last owners. I still have uh, like a shower curtain up from the last owners. Yeah. Like it's just, it's taking a long time to make tracks in the house. Right. Well, we want to make big changes to the house. And so it's, Really it's difficult. It's quite worth it to. Yeah, it's really difficult to make like medium changes when you know that 
you want to make a bigger like, one. Gut, it's gut like it. worth it <laughs> to just wait a little bit longer, you know, live, yeah. you know, live with it the way it is and then make the change eventually once you've saved up and it's the right time, right. you know. Anyway, all that said, thank you to all of you who sent your pictures in. Again, what a fun thing to look through gardens this morning and see some beautiful, beautiful, inspiring images. And we will be back here next week for our 10th installment of this series. So we've still got a ton, ton of gardens. Uh, we will put a link down below as well if you want to jump on board and send in your pictures. Uh, we will still collect all of those and then hopefully we'll just keep on going with this. Uh, I think we are going to maybe... And I'll put out a video or something asking for submissions for a new segment, mm -hmm. like a, a different subject, uh, something a little bit more... Small spaces. Yeah, small spaces. That's what we should do. Yeah. Yeah. Small... Yeah. So maybe the next one will be small spaces. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys again and hope you're having a great week and we will see you in the next video. Bye.